Hi guys, I really wanted to talk to you today about the reference libraries or the dictionaries, some people call it. So when we try to figure out our language of spirit, of course, I have a whole course on the language of spirit, but one of the things I really recommend within the course is creating a reference library of sorts. And the reason for this is, is that spirit uses experiences that we've had, whether we recall them through vision, whether we recall them through memory, just like a thought, whether we actually physically see something um, in our mind's eye that we experienced before, an emotion might come up that reminds you of an experience you had with somebody else, spirit will call upon these references to pass along information in a mediumship reading. And intuitive living, they are passing along this reference uh, to us so that we make more aligned decisions with our lives. So one thing that we can do to support the world of spirit in this language is to build a reference library. So I challenge my students to create a library that consists of names, maybe even just picking like the top three names, male or female, um, ways of passing if you're into mediumship, like how did people pass around you? Was there car accidents? Um, was there heart attacks? Was there dementia, Alzheimer's? Like write down a few different ways that are quite common for people to pass. And then you could write down things such as who are three people that you know on the heaven side, on the home side of this existence, grandmother, grandfather, um, husband, etc. So write down relationships that could be on the other side. Um, another thing too is psychic symbols. So if you see a cross, what does that mean for you? It's very individual to you. You can read all the books in the world, but until you uh, put the intention forward that the cross means Catholicism, when you're in a reading setting, you tre you test it out, you try it out, and if it lands true, okay, this is my symbol for um, somebody who's a part of the Catholic faith. Or for me, the cross actually represents a nurse. So I'm able to actually say to a sitter saying, I feel like your mom was a nurse, she's showing me the cross, because that's what the cross represents for me. So you can see it's very unique. We all have a very individualized relationship with the language of spirit. So write down um, you know, what you think of when you think of a tree or think of a river or um, think of like swimming in a lake. Like what does it make you feel? What, what does it make you, what does it remind you of? And just trust that spirit uses that because you've put the intention forward by making the reference library, telling the world of spirit, this is how I'm open to receiving information from you. I understand this at a deeper level than anything else. And spirit being intelligent, will call upon that reference library that you took the intention and time to create. And it's a trial and error thing. Uh, one of the examples I really like to, to leave around um, psychic symbols is, you know, when I first started developing as a medium, just doing practice readings, I kept seeing a motorcycle. And I would say to my sitter, um, you know, I feel like your dad had a motorcycle. No. Nope. And then the next reading, I would be like, okay, I feel like your brother uh, really likes motorcycles. No, nope. but what I noticed after getting it wrong so many times and not giving up, because I do not give up, when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. And I just worked with the ego. I'm like, okay, it hurts, but I'm going to keep going. What I realized was everybody who said no to the motorcycle, their loved one passed of a car accident. And that was the commonality that I saw in all those experiences. So I would simply say, okay, let's try this. And my next reading, when I saw the motorcycle come up, I said, did your loved one pass in a car accident, love? Yes, okay, that's my sign for car accident. And it is until it isn't. <laughs> which is the tricky thing. So you have to be okay getting some things wrong uh, when you're working with the reference library at first, right? It's trial and error, it truly is. And again, it comes to a point where you could read all the books, take all the classes, but until you're out there doing the work, which is really the classroom, everything's gonna be theory, right? So you gotta test things out and continue to try them, build your confidence with the world of spirit, with your language of spirit, and this is a phenomenal way. Another way that I have a reference library, which I never wrote down, but because I am clairsentient, mostly, I, I mostly communicate through clairsentience. Um, anytime my arm would go numb, I'd be working with somebody um, who passed a stroke. Um, when I felt it on my chest, um, you know, sometimes it was breast cancer and sometimes it was a heart attack. They didn't feel any different at all to me, but I used my discernment, which is on a different video, to discern that this time it's a breast cancer and not a heart attack, et cetera, et cetera. Anytime my hands would go all achy, I knew I was dealing with someone who had like really severe arthritis, but 
the arthritis was a bummer because they really lived uh, a life of crafting and hobbying and working with their hands, you see. So I have symbols all over my body that are my own reference library for spirit to work with. They're like, okay, she knows what depression feels like. It's a pain on the side of her head. Bring that to her. She will know how to message that. So it's, continue, it's continuing to build your reference library which sometimes and often are going to be outside of a mediumship book or a mediumship classroom. Uh, I have some of my greatest references come from books that are um, historical. Like I love um, the history of England and the kings and queens of Plantagenets. And I will read a book and sure enough, the next time I have a reading, there will be a reference from that book I just read um, for my sitter every single time. So this is how we continue to grow our references. But it does take a certain amount of courage and a certain amount of faith and trust to be able to message what you're thinking and message what you're receiving and being vulnerable enough to be okay that it's incorrect it's misunderstood but you got to keep going don't give up on it okay so start with the list start with three boy names three girl names five ways of passing three people that you know on the other side um, also like articles of clothing, like for me, I only deal with uniforms, show me if it's a cop uniform, a pilot uniform, firefighter uniform, et cetera, et cetera. So write down three articles of clothing that could be significant that come up in readings. Maybe it's a piece of jewelry, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, I love saying like, what are your top three favorite memories as a child? I can't tell you how many times Spirit has brought me through my own memories that also make sense for my sitter as well. So start your reference library. It's a great tool to start building your relationship with the world of Spirit and of course your language of Spirit.